Hi, I'm Gene Benson, and I want to do a quick review of how to avoid having a runway excursion. We all know what that is. The airplane, not through the wishes of the pilot, leaves the runway by going off a side or off the end. Not good, extremely embarrassing, potentially dangerous, usually costly, and it will ruin your day. I study airplane accidents, and I can tell you that many runway excursions could be prevented by doing better pre-flight planning. Remember the error chain? It frequently begins hours or even days before the accident. Sometimes the first link is insufficient pre-flight planning. In addition to a thorough analysis of expected weather, we need to learn everything we can learn about the airports that we plan to use and our alternate airports. Yeah, I know, it's more fun to get in the airplane and go flying. But it's no fun at all to try and explain how you ended up off the runway with a banged up airplane. Be in the know. What we don't know can hurt us. The pilot of this airplane was mistaken as to the correct frequency for the pilot activated lighting. He ended up aligned with the hangar lights rather than the runway lights. A check of the chart supplement provides us with the information that we do need to know. There is no excuse not to know all about our airports that we might use. Study each airport as depicted in the current chart supplement. Note in the example shown, it depicts a military helicopter landing area. Large helicopters produce powerful wake turbulence. Of course, we must always check NOTAMs for current conditions. What we don't know about an airport can hurt us. What about the wind? Sometimes we focus on ceiling and visibility, but we ignore the forecast wind. Botched crosswind landings are a common cause of runway excursions. More about crosswind landings later. One of the most important concepts for any landing is to establish and maintain a stabilized approach. If the approach path is not constant, then the approach is not stabilized. There are also some other elements to the stabilized approach. First, we must establish an altitude below which an immediate go around or missed approach will be executed if the approach is not stabilized or becomes unstabilized. 500 feet AGL works well for most GA operations. Be sure to convert that to MSL before beginning the approach. Here are some generally recognized criteria for an approach to be considered stabilized. Since we are keeping this brief, we will just refer you to the Vectors for Safety website in the Safety Concepts section. Just visit VectorsForSafety.com and click on the Safety Concepts tab at the top of the page. Lots more information on the stabilized approach will appear. As we already said, a significant number of runway excursions happen during the execution of a crosswind landing, so we will talk about that subject briefly. Let's return to our pre-flight preparation. We should have a good idea of what to expect at any of our possible landing runways regarding the crosswind component. The wind will probably not be exactly what it was forecast, but we should be able to identify dangerous or marginal conditions before we depart. We are all familiar with this crosswind component chart. For a rule of thumb without the chart, we can come close. If the wind differs from the runway heading by 15 degrees, the crosswind component is 1 quarter or 25% of the wind velocity. If the difference between the wind and the runway is 30 degrees, the crosswind is half of the reported wind speed. If the wind makes a 45 degree angle with the runway, the crosswind component is 3 quarters or 75% of the overall wind speed. And when the windsock is pointing 60 degrees or more from the runway center line, just assume the crosswind is the same as the total wind. It's pretty close, and you'd only be overestimating the crosswind component, which is probably a good thing anyway. The greater the angle, the more dangerous the gusts. However, the maximum for the airplane might not be the maximum for the pilot. We must be honest with ourselves about our proficiency in handling a crosswind. How long has it been since we tackled a stiff or a gusty crosswind? Of course, there is lots more to be said on the subject, and here is a start. For tons of valuable safety information, please visit VectorsForSafety.com. Just click around and you will find expanded information on everything we discussed. Or, find our YouTube video called Many Happy Returns, which is the full version of this video. I'm Gene Benson. Thanks for watching. And remember to always fly like your life depends on it.